fire, earth, uh, lightning, air. Long ago, the three races lived together in harmony. But everything changed when the sequels attacked. Only Blizzard, master of all things StarCraft, could balance them. But when the community needed them most, they scandaled. Months passed, and the community discovered a new way to revive the game. Challenge runs. And although most of the interesting ideas have already been done, there's a lot to explore before the game is completely dead. But I believe challenge runs can save StarCraft. Well, no, because flamethrowers can't shoot up. But let's at least make it to Char. Oh, uh, Polly, are you going to use that voice for the entire series? It's my run. I do what I want. The rules are simple. Only use units with flamethrowers in combat. Transport units are allowed. Only use heroes with flamethrowers in combat. Missile turrets are allowed to defend against air units. Only use flamethrower-related upgrades. Transport upgrades are allowed. The run will officially begin with the evacuation, which is the first mission that gives me a flamethrower unit, the Firebat. The run will be done on hard difficulty. While I don't get any flamethrowers on Marsar, the civilians in Liberation Day do throw Molotovs, and I also make sure to let the Dominion base burn down in the Outlaws. Fun fact. Did you know that Molotov cocktails were named after the Soviet foreign minister, Vyacheslav Molotov? They were dubbed this by the Finnish army during the Winter War, in response to the Soviets claiming the bombs they were dropping were actually food deliveries, which the Finns dubbed bread baskets. Anyways, I land on Agria and get access to useful fire bats. After feeding my medics to the Zerg, I rush out as many fire bats as possible. With armor and splash damage, they easily roast hordes of zerglings, though I'm forced to rely on these disgusting marines to protect me from mutalisks. When they're overrun, I simply lure enemy mutas to the auto turrets at the starport. Eventually, I escort all the colonists out, and the mission ends. I head to Redstone next, and... Push yourself. Hell, cowboy, we gotta train more of these guys. They're seriously badass. No, Swan. I am doing a challenge run. Stop sabotaging me. But Pi, Reapers have jetpacks with flames. Surely you can use them too. What in God's name are you doing with my run? This is not jetpacks only. This is not lasers only. This is flamethrower only. And under my command, this will be the finest challenge among StarCraft II challenges on YouTube. Anyways, I'm faced with a dilemma. There's regular air attacks, meaning I need at least one missile turret to defend. My strategy boils down to letting the mutas get shredded by my turret, while using my fire bats to burn through the ground attacks. I try to destroy the enemy bases, but they're filled with pesky air units, so I choose the boring route of mining everything. I have to delay mining after each lava flow, since landing my second command center draws enemy raids to it. After each attack is beaten, I land and mine as much as possible before the next lava flow. Eventually I get enough resources, and the mission ends. I head to mine off next to fight some zombies. After fending off the early attacks with my fire bats, I realize that without healers, my infantry won't last long against infested marines. So I do what I thought I'd never do again. Use aliens on Outbreak. Since they can be repaired by SEVs, they'll likely be my main unit for the rest of the run. During daytime, I send packs of fire bats and hellions across the map to clear infested structures. Eventually, I clear the map, and the mission ends. Fun fact, did you know it was once legal to mount flamethrowers on cars in South Africa? In 1998, people kept getting their cars stolen, so naturally the option was given to attach flamethrowers to their cars to deter thieves. Now mind you, they were meant to blind people, not, you know, set them on fire. 
It's time to rob some Diamond Pass. Silent Swan. Evidently, flamethrowers aren't that great against locomotives. After rushing out Hellions, I just barely destroy the initial trains. Since I need the entire length of each track to kill the early trains, I clear out the enemy bunkers before they can be garrisoned. Since aliens are surprisingly mineral heavy, I'm forced to let a train go to secure an expansion. While the final train's escort is too tough to burn, I stay ahead of the train and finish it off, right as my army is completely destroyed. Next, I... Swan, what are you doing? Diamondbacks! Look, I can't build diamondbacks. Diamondbacks! I'm only supposed to build flamethrowers! Diamondbacks! 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 Rule number six. As punishment for my sins, Lord Swan demands that I stop making fun of him in these videos. Sorry, I'll try to... No, 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 can't do it. So I start the mission with useless marines. To add insult to injury, Swan tries to sabotage me with useless marauders, but I send them as cannon fodder to distract the enemy. Meanwhile, I rush out a perdition turret to hold off the initial attacks, and mass a force of aliens. With more feigned retreats, I repeatedly harass and push through the enemy lines. There's not enough time to get all the relics, so I head straight to the artifact. These disgusting zone zealots nearly kill my aliens, but they are beaten by my superior flames. I forgot how resourceful you were, Jim. I won't make that mistake twice. <laughs> Anyways, I head to Dead Man's Port to bribe Matt's wife. I start off with useless marines, and to add insult to injury, Mira sends me useless vulture bikes. What did I ever do to her? Mira's still mad since I killed her entire army in Cutthroat. Not satisfied with massacring his wife's entire army, Matt decides to also attack her fleet. Anyways, I rush out aliens instead. While they cost 25 more minerals than vultures, they also have more health. Since Orland's attacks become progressively stronger, I raise his outpost as soon as possible. To fuel my offensive, I end up clearing most of the map of minerals. But eventually, I pay off Mira. And for 6,000 minerals, I get... NOTHING! I spend the next half hour building an actual army of aliens and fire mats before diving on Orland's command center and burning it down before my army is finished off. I don't have a good segue for this next fact. Pyromania is an impulse control disorder where one is unable to resist setting fires. Pyromaniacs know burning things is wrong, but they feel it's the only way to deal with anxiety or arousal. Now mind you, this isn't the same as pyrophilia, which leans more in the arousal direction. And most arsonists are not pyromaniacs. Generally, they do it because of insurance fraud, disposal of evidence, political beliefs, or alcohol. And I've already failed this mission. I need to rely on the Odin for anti-air anyways, but in the spirit of the run, I limit my support to aliens with SCVs to keep Tychus alive. Unfortunately, Swan tries to sabotage me by giving me useless raids. Ignoring Matt's advice to take out enemy air units, I instead use my bikes to pick off enemy infantry and serve as cannon fodder. After losing nearly a hundred aliens, I get the Odin to the final base, and Ikis drops a nuke on it, ending the mission. I didn't think Welcome to the Jungle was doable with flamethrowers only, and it's technically not, but with missile turrets things get more bearable. While I can't use my missile turrets for fighting, I can use them to defend. Using packs of aliens, I draw enemy air units back to my base, letting them chase my bikes while my turrets rip them to shreds. When the enemy tries to seal the shrines, I take out the probe before driving off, allowing me to buy time as I clear the way to the shrines. I also make sure to secure the expansion, allowing me to access the other shrines with ease. To deal with raids on my SEVs, I let my cars dance in front of the Taldarine, confusing them and allowing the gas to be harvested with impunity. Eventually, I get enough terrazine, and the mission ends. And I fail this mission too. After the annoying intro segment, I get access to my base and the laser drill. I'm hoping that I won't need it, since it's technically not a flamethrower. But despite establishing a perimeter of perdition turrets and hellions, the Protoss attacks are way too intense. I shouldn't. It's not the arsonist way. Do it.
I'm gonna level with you guys. I, I couldn't beat this without the drill. Um, surprisingly, Hellions don't do well against anything that isn't a solid. Also, I ran out of minerals by the end, though my bikes and turrets once again bought enough time to win the mission. Fun fact, while the sun appears to be on fire, it doesn't burn like regular fires. When you set a sheet of flame, the molecules within the paper combine with those of the air, producing the reaction known as combustion. The sun instead burns through nuclear fusion, which converts the element hydrogen into the element helium. Unlike combustion, this process does not require oxygen. After the insanity of the dig, the run gets considerably easier. That was a lie, I'm sorry. I rush static defense since I start with useless marines, and Haru tries to sabotage me by sending me useless war pigs. I also rush out Hellions to deal with the data cores. Get us out of here! Oh, you'll get out of living. For the first core, I stay away from the Nidus worm that spawns and repel the enemy ground forces. When the mutas attack, I draw them back to my base and shoot them out of the sky. With Kerrigan searching for the core, I just barely destroy it in time. Of course. The Mobius data cores. You won't get the rest of them. <laughs> With the second core, I drop my aliens behind the structure and whittle away at it. I'm under a time limit since Broodlords will attack my base after the 22 minute mark. So I mass as many aliens as I can before flying around Zerg lines and rushing my aliens behind the final core. With the Zerg overwhelming my base and ripping my bikes to shreds, I barely finish off the last building. I didn't plan on playing the Avid missions because air units, but the only other options are Media Blitz and New Folsom. So yeah. Now, ordinarily, I choose Haven's Fall, but Broodlords are Broodlords, so saving Haven it is. Unfortunately, Swan tries to sabotage me by giving me useless Vikings, but I incinerate them easily. But I can't destroy the colonists. In the spirit of the arsonist, I let the settlements get destroyed. They're gonna destroy our ship! We're all going to die! That's the point, Sergeant. My strategy is to build up a force of aliens to raid each Nexus while fortifying my base with missile turrets. The first two Nexi are fairly simple to destroy, but the third one has a large force of carriers, Archons, and even a High Templar. After failing dozens of times, I sacrifice my SEVs to cover my attack and I finish off the Nexus before the last of my aliens fall. The purifier floats to its death, and the mission ends. You are as cunning as the stories say, James Raynor. After spending an entire mission stealing the Odin, I proceed to let it jog to its death. Unfortunately, Swan tries to sabotage me by giving me useless floors, but I melt them down for parts. After totally not buying more upgrades, I proceed to fortify my base and push through Dominion lines. The mech base forced me to max out and throw my entire alien force at the siege tanks. After losing half my army, I rebuild and proceed to the air base. To deal with this, I set up missile turrets and lower the nearby banshees into them. After taking out the command center and half the starports, I cut away to the tower. I can't attack with missile turrets, but nothing says I can't build turrets to defend the tower. Using these, I finish off the last banshees and starports. With a mix of turrets and aliens, I hold each tower until time runs out and the mission ends. Fun fact, during World War II, the British designed a number of defenses in the event of German invasion. One such trap was the Flame Fugats, barrels of petroleum and oil that would detonate to cover enemy armor in flames. This idea goes back as far as the 1500, where the original Fugas was a simple hole filled with gunpowder and debris. Supernova is absolutely insane. Not only is there a wave of fire literally destroying everything, but there's limited resources and a boatload of Protoss defenders to deal with. To add insult to injury, Swan gives me useless banshees and forces me to use them at the start. I'm stuck with Hellions, which suck against anything that's not a zealot. I'm forced to resort to unorthodox strategies. First, I sneak Hellions behind Protoss lines and drop them near the vault but there's too many cannons and scouts at the rear. Then I let the fire wave destroy everything, which takes around 40 minutes or so. Unfortunately, if the fire wave destroys the vault, the mission ends in failure. 
So I go with attrition. Expansion by expansion, I slowly but surely push through each Daldarine base while maxing out and lowering enemy air units into my missile turrets. Eventually, I reach the end and destroy the vault before the fire wave arrives. A magnificent victory. An exquisite strategy. You lowered the difficulty to normal, didn't you? I lowered it to normal. All right, back to hard difficulty. I have to use these disgusting battle cruisers, but after clearing the landing zone, I send them to burn. Since the map is once again too fortified to fight through, I resort to my clever strategy. Fly around it. I'm going in! Off-road? Hell, I do my best work off-world! Oh boy, I'm hotter than a June bug riding bareback on the hind leg of a jackrabbit with his tail on fire! Well done. You're every bit as resourceful as I've been led to believe. It's time to head to Char. Since most of the Dominion groups don't have flamethrowers, I feed them to the Zerg while I fortify my base and build up Hellions and Hercules dropships. I so love the way you kindle their hope, Jim. By all means, bring them all to my doorstep. It'll be like lambs to the slaughter. <laughs> Anyways, after exhausting the resources on the map, I identify a flight path through the thinnest part of the Zerg defenses, sacrificing my medevacs to tank scourge hits. After dropping by the Nidus Worms, I lure the Zerg into Dominion lines and finish off the worms before my aliens are destroyed. You magnificent son of a b <laughs> Fun fact. Greek fire is a napalm-like substance used by the Byzantines that would ignite immediately and couldn't be extinguished with water. It was used on ships via siphons that would set enemy fleets alight. The exact recipe was a closely guarded secret and was lost with the fall of the Empire in the 15th century. Since I obviously can't beat all in air, I choose to shatter the sky. But Poi, how are you gonna beat all the air units? Do I need to beat the air units? I resort to the classic strategy of flying around my problems, dropping aliens on top of the reactors and sacrificing dozens of bikes to kill four structures. Whenever broodlords show up, I build missile turrets under them while using my aliens to draw their fire. Obviously, I avoid the Leviathan like the plague, and eventually I destroy all four reactors, ending the mission. It seems my faith in your abilities has been vindicated, Commander Raynor. All in is gonna be a doozy. After feeding my Zerg with my starting army, I form lines of perdition turrets and aliens to hold off the enemy. Whenever Nidus worms pop up, I hunt them down using aliens. Kerrigan is a bit more tricky, though I'm able to repel her first two attacks at great cost to my aliens. As the mission goes on, more and more worms emerge, and I'm forced to constantly drive around the map to destroy Zerg reinforcements. Eventually, their numbers get so great that I'm forced to use the artifact. But Poi, the artifact isn't a flamethrower, it's a magic rock. And yet, as the clip shows, these Zerg are clearly on fire after getting hit with the energy nova. Now that sounds like a flamethrower to me. Despite my left flank collapsing, I manage to hold on to the artifact until time runs out, and the mission ends. A brilliant strategy. An excellent victory. You lowered the difficulty to normal, didn't you? I lowered it to normal. I only got halfway on hard. Before Raynor goes to retrieve Kerrigan, I have to settle something first. I got it. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. Sure, damn straight. Hey, give me a hand, will ya? That's great. Break it down. There, now we can get Kerrigan. So can you beat Wings of Liberty using only flamethrowers? Nope. Most missions require me to use missile turrets to defend my base. Welcome to the jungle, safe haven, and media blitz require me to lure enemy air units back to my turrets. Mobius Factor, Maw of the Void, Gates of Hell, and Shatter the Sky require me to rely on transport units to drop on mission objectives. Engine of Destruction, The Dig, and All In all require me to rely on the special units and structures to win. Supernova and All In both require me to lower the difficulty to have a chance at beating them. And of course, the Marsera missions, New Falsa missions, Avens Fall, Piercing the Shroud, and Prophecy missions can't be done in this challenge. 
With all this in mind, how much of the campaign can be done using flamethrowers for offense? Two missions can be done without missile turrets. Three missions can be done by luring enemy air units back to my base. Five missions can be done relying on transport units to get my aliens to the objectives. Five other missions can be done using flamethrowers for offense and turrets for defense. In total, 15 of 29 missions can be done as an arsonist. While I initially wanted to use firebats more, the lack of early healing units, the need for gas, and lack of range meant that aliens ended up being my main combat unit. Perhaps I treated you too harshly. I didn't show definite count of alien deaths, but a quick look at some of the mission end screens show that hundreds if not thousands of aliens perished for this challenge. Rest in peace, flamey boys. While mobile and effective against light units, the arsonist arsenal suffers from a lack of anti-air, a lack of healing units, and being surprisingly mineral heavy. Ironic. This concludes the arsonist phase of the elemental challenge. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and burn all of Swan's equipment because he still sucks.